gone through uh, lots of traffic and some of you inconvenienced to be here. Uh, but the Lord bless you uh, as we come together to finish up this series. Well, uh, Sunday, is ne next fr uh, this Friday, not next Friday, this Friday is 1.30. This is when we have uh, the worship night. And I want to encourage every one of you to come. Uh, because we just spend more time to pray and to wait on God and to allow God to, uh, to speak to us. Uh, you want to be here as we come towards the end of the year. Well, it's been a great pleasure um, to be part of the journey of Mavuno right from the very beginning and to be part of uh, the services this month. I've enjoyed myself. It was with great humility that I came to share uh, this sermon series with Pastor Carol. Uh, who has today deserted me for her husband, uh, to join her husband in the U.S., um, and uh, uh, they'll be back soon. That's our senior pastor. But it's been a great privilege just for us to have a conversation about women. Um, my, uh, I, have, I was born by one and raised up by one. I grew up about, uh, around six sisters, um, really 14 sisters, if you count all of us. Um, and I've lived with one for quite a number of years, and I'm raising two. Uh, and I've had many friends who are feminine. So it's been a privilege just to get to a place where I, I can understand women much better and learn how to appreciate them. I think this is what this man has done for me. As we have done this series about who is she who is worth fighting for? How does a woman play to or by design? How does she understand how she was created uh, to prosper? What is femininity in God's design? Who is God's dream gal? Uh, that's what we've been talking about. Week one, we talked about queen uh, beauty and brains. And we looked at the three assets that women use, especially out in the marketplace, to influence and to achieve their calling in God. And we looked at uh, an influential queen who is beautiful, about the physical and how they appreciate that. And then we talked about inward beauty and how to appreciate that and use that as well, of character, of a humble spirit, of a godly spirit. And we talked about wisdom. She is beautiful, but she is wise. She knows when to do what. She has God's wisdom and she has intelligence uh, and responsible. She uses her skill, uh, skills and gift mix uh, to get the job done. So she's powerfully positioned to influence. Then week two, we talked about the homemaker or the natural. We said she's born to bless. Great natural mentors, raises others, gives away life. Eve means the one who gives life, raises others up, gives away life to others and causes them to grow up. But she's designed to design. She's created in a design, uh, with a certain design to bring design, a touch of finesse to everything that uh, she gets involved in. Lastly, she cares. She's a, a caring mom, uh, not only at home, but that spirit goes way beyond home. That's what we talked about. Last week, wonderful conversation, the partner to have and to hold. Uh, we talked about uh, whether you want to be married or not, whether you're married or not. You have some qualities, single or married, you have some qualities that make you a wonderful partner uh, uh, to others. And we talked about a great partner is committed, submissive, and supportive. Well, all that we've been saying is that as a woman, God has called you to express your femininity, which is really an image of the almighty God. It's not about fitting in the culture. It's way beyond that. It's not about just serving your husband. It's greater than that. It's about really being the woman that God wants you to become. Let me take this moment at this time to appreciate the woman in my home, my partner, Sophia. Musioka, baby. So, uh, would you just give a clap to my sweetheart, the woman of my life, wonderful partner, designer. Well, uh, she has done a lot. Uh, let me just say, I've really been humbled to work with this woman. She's taught me a lot. I've become the better for her. Came into the marriage feeling a little superior. Uh, let me fix this woman. Uh, uh, Many years later, 
God has worked on me so much. I've come to see definitely she's a better half of me. She's taught me godliness. She's taught me just to see who God looks like uh, in terms of femininity. I appreciate you. Well, I know tomorrow I'll get uh, pancakes for breakfast, but it was way beyond that. Uh, it was way beyond that. Great partner. Uh, this is something about a great feminine woman that shows who God is, as we talked last week. Well, as we bring this to a close, today we talk about BFF, Friends for the Journey. When we talk about the woman as a friend, uh, what does she look like? Uh, now, we were created for relationships and rulership, and that's what we've been talking about this month. How do you as a woman bring rulership to whatever God has called you to, and also relationship? And today, we especially focus on relationship. Life is hard. I don't know about you, but there are patches, hard patches in life. You need a friend. You need someone to walk with. As one of the football teams uh, say, uh, never walk alone. You don't want to try that. Never walk alone. And in the journey of femininity, I think one of the things that really uh, helps you, uh, helps every woman, just like men need friends. Every woman needs a true friend. Well, Female friendships are a little different from male friendships. Uh, I could tell you that uh, for a fact. Women are definitely more relational, more relational. They have more words to spare and have conversations. The times I come home and my words are done. Uh, all can, I can afford is a hug, uh, not talk much. That's why we love watching news and some other things. We want others to talk to us. Sometimes we're just out of words. More emotionally intelligent and expressive. Women are definitely that. And it's not just a cultural conditioning. It's a reality of biology. Uh, that they're more emotionally intelligent and ex expressive. That makes you, uh, you know, a different kind of friend to your girlfriends uh, than we are to our boyfriends. And of course, you have this attractive, uh, caring spirit, which is crucial for relationships. Let me ask you a question. If you took 10 men, put them in a room for 10 days. What is likely to happen? You're thinking. Well, let me tell you, by the end of the 10 days, some of them will not even know each other's names. I mean, there are times I meet some very good friends and my wife asks me, what is his name? I say, Actually, I can't remember. Let me call and see what True Caller tells me. But uh, really, we are good friends. In fact, we could go to war together. Uh, but, uh, you know, names are details. Uh, Pastor Courier, uh, right? <laughs> At least I know yours. Uh, so the men will be there. They'll probably talk about politics. Maybe the one who supports Chelsea will become the leader of the team. Uh, well, the men, I'm sure they're protesting. But uh, they'll talk about sports, politics, who's going to win elections in Tanzania today, uh, finances, cars, and things like that. You know, important subjects. They'll talk about them. They'll get to know each other, um, what each other does, you know, whether one is a lawyer or a doctor or whatever else, and probably what they drive. They're probably going to ask, are you German or are you Japanese, <laughs> uh, in terms of your ride? Uh, and probably they're going to, uh, they're not going to talk much more about it. They may say whether they're married or not, whether they're dating or not, but if they are, you know, uh, if someone asks, uh, but those are details you don't need to bring to the table of men. Um, well, there might be a few bullfights, especially around uh, politics and the team you support. But pretty quickly, there's going to be those who are respected to be the leaders, team leaders, and the others will fall into place. Now, they'll probably pick a project to do within those 10 days. All right. Ten women... Same room for 10 days. What's going to happen? <laughs> uh, someone is asking, how big is the room? A football field. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Well, let me start with the good things. 
They're going to get deep, and within the first day, they will know each other's boyfriend or uh, names of the children, whether they have a pet or not, uh, the recipes they like, and things like that. They'll get deep. They'll get to know each other uh, much deeper than work. Now, they're going to probably even begin to talk about the fears of their lives, what they fear, and broken relationships, and what's happening with their marriage. They're going to get really deep, uh, which is not what the men are used to. But, cut fights. <laughs> you know, some drama is going to show up. Well, I don't think every woman has, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a drama queen in every woman. I don't think I've seen that in my wife. But, um, there's going to be a bit of drama. Well, uh, that's not true. I think I've seen a bit of that. Uh, there's going to be a bit of drama. They're going to begin to fight about who took each other's, uh, who's uh, comb uh, or makeup or something like that, or toothpaste where it was placed. There's going to be a bit of drama. Women, am I representing you well? No, all right. Uh, they fight for more, about more serious things like those. There's definitely going to be a few cliques around some queen bees or some, you know, the alpha diva uh, is just going to command respect and the others are going to fall into place. You, you know, the power play we were talking about that men don't get, uh, but that is going to happen. Sooner or later, someone is going to lead, they're going to have a clique and they're going to look down at the other clique and there's going to be a, a bit of sizing each other up. Uh, you know, according to uh, what you, you've got and what brand of clothes you have, the makeup you have on yourself, uh, accents, and probably things like those. Women. <laughs> well... <laughs> um, they're probably going to, to share their clothes at some one point or another. Well, men don't do that. I was very surprised when we got married. I was brought up in a, uh, in a home uh, where, uh, with my brothers, nobody ever took each other's shirt. Then one day, my wife just took my jacket and wore it. And I wondered, what? Uh, and she said, we always shared our clothes. So I had to be socialized into that kind of lifestyle. But I couldn't understand, how could you just take my... You, don't, you didn't even know I wanted to wear it. You know, how do you just get it? take it. Uh, well, we had some fights around that, but I surrendered. Um, now, if there's a dude around those twin women, Kwisha Maneno, <laughs> you know, the power plays and all of that, you know, the plot just thickens. Well, I don't think I'm an expert on women, but those are some, uh, what some women told me. It's been said women are each other's worst enemies. Is that true? In politics, we have been told that many women would rather, women would rather support a male candidate than a woman candidate, probably for reasons. Women, I am told, size each other up and tear each other down with their eyes. It's from top to down. And they may compliment you, and then after a while, they just tear you down. Who does she think she is? Fight a lot, I am told, again, through gossip and slander, and struggle much more with emotional hearts in relationships. Jealousy, hate, bitterness, and resentment uh, are common emotions among friends on television, female friends on television, uh, whether it's Nollywood or Mexican soaps. Uh, it's a big, there are big themes around there. I'm told women easily cut each other down at work. And I've seen it in one place where I've worked, where it was easy for a woman to come and talk to me negatively about another woman that is working there in a way that I should not regard them for a promotion or something like that. I've seen some things like that. Is it that men don't have issues? They have issues. It's just that we're talking about women uh, at this time. How can a woman with all of this have lasting, powerful friendships? How can you as a woman play out your role as a friend? How can we as men understand you as friends with your girlfriends and then support you and pray for you and uh, be able to value who you are as a friend? Well, it seems to me that in the very strength that God has given us, the devil attacks us. Look at the Bible. Eve used her words and made emotional appeal to bring Adam to eating the fruit. She ate first. 
and then she gave to the man. Hagar and Sarah married, uh, uh, you know, Sarah married to Abraham and at some point gave a husband to Hagar and was working there. Then soon after that, they just became enemies and you know the rest of the story. Miriam stood up to his brother Moses when the, uh, uh, Moses brought in an Ethiopian woman. Um, and, you know, I'm sure Miriam looked at it and said, the power play is going to change in this home. <laughs> I'm the sister. She's a wife. Uh, she looks all that. There's going to be a tr some trouble here. I'm sure she probably began to tweet about it uh, or put it on WhatsApp. But they just began to uh, fight each other to God's intervention. Jacob and Elkanah and many others, with, uh, you know, two women in their lives, uh, there was a lot of drama. Maybe we don't have too many examples in the Bible about women who are great friends, though there are some. But I believe every woman is called to be a wonderful friend who shows who God looks like. Well, it's not just uh, women uh, who need other female friends. Men also need friends in women. I want a friend in my wife. I want a friend in someone that I work with, uh, with no strings attached. But we want to see that friendship uh, quality in women. We began to look at 1 Samuel 25, and definitely there are good things to say about Abigail the friend. But today we're going to look at a different text. But because we need to hear the voice of a woman... I want today to invite uh, one of my friends, a uh, face you've seen on television, a producer, TV personality, and a mother, my friend Kanze Dena. Please uh, just give it up for her as she comes for us to share this. Wow. Welcome. Welcome. Well, before you have uh, invited me to your TV station and Produce very well for the programs that we had, but today I invite you to this house. So welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself, just, just, just who you, you are. Thank you, Percy. You know, from here, it's, it's very different. Yeah. You know, in the studio, I'm speaking to cameras. <laughs> <laughs> here, I'm seeing people. Yes. So when you start seeing me fidget, just know there's a problem uh -huh. because I'm very shy. Like, <laughs> hello, hello, Mavuno. I'm Jambo. Well, yeah, I know you use more Swahili. Do, yes. do we go down that road? Uh, no, let's not go down that road. <laughs> it's also a well. good opportunity for me to let people know that I know English. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I thought about it before I invited you. <laughs> anyway, but good to have you here. And of Thank course, you. you're in yellow, and you know that blesses me. Oh, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> Queen Dena. Uh, I mean, we, we talked uh, and you were here. By the way, she's a fearless Mavunite, so let's celebrate her. Yes, uh, yes. Let me add that. I'm yeah. also a member of an LG called Potter's Clay. Yeah. Tuko. Wow. That's great to hear. So, uh, beauty and brains, we talked about that. Um, uh, from where I sit, you're beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and I'm sure you have uh, the inward beauty as well, as character and all of that. And you listen to that someone. And we said beauty and brains, they help you to perform at work, to influence at work. How has that helped you in what you do? Okay, let me start with brains. <laughs> beauty, God said we are all beautifully and wonderfully made. Mm. But research has also proven that uh, when people watch television, 55% is what you look like. As in the person on air, they remember 55% of that person, mm. and then they remember the information 10%, 5%. So I guess <laughs> there is a cue in knowing that, yes, there's importance to put a beautiful face on TV. Man, is that true? Okay. Uh, <laughs> just, just, just don't they're answer. playing safe. They're playing safe. You need to know that they're seated to special people. They have to play safe. Anyway, so um, then about brains... I think we all go to school. The kind of job that I do... So you're saying beauty has brought you to the set, to the television set, and, and of course... Uh, uh, but you just want me to sound so vain, well. Basi. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah. that is one. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, okay, let me just... And then the brains, uh, yes, sorry. then the brains. Know, I just wanted to brains. appreciate that, because uh, I will ask you another question shortly, but uh, okay. let's go ahead. The brains. Okay, the brains, the nature mm. of my job, I work as a TV producer and also mm. as a news anchor. Yeah. And... Uh, so as a news anchor, it means that then I need to be in touch with everything that is going on in the country. I need to at least know what's happening everywhere mm -hmm. so that I'm not caught off guard when news comes on air, like breaking news and all that. So I have to read, for sure. 
As a TV producer, means I lead a great team. And then I need to know how to work with them. And because we direct live productions, which is news, anything can happen at any time. So it means I also need to be ahead of my game in terms of production. The sound would fail, what am I going to do? The video clip would fail, what am I going to do? My cameraman will come in mood swings and I ask for a shot and I'm given a different thing. I feel you guys at the container. So <laughs> I need to always be ahead of my game. So it means I need to study my situation before the bulletin starts. If there's anything I need to back up on, then I need to do it. And let me just say, having come to your studios a few times, I mean, I've heard, you know, some of, some of the guys there really talk highly of you. Uh, and I've seen you at work and seen Thank the you. quality of your work. So you. uh, it's definitely uh, beauty and brains. Uh, and have you had challenges with that in terms of your influence at work and being a queen? Have you had any challenges around it? Wow, yes, there have been some challenges. I guess, you know, again, because we have an environment where we also have ladies and men, Sometimes uh, drawing the boundaries also is important mm. so that they understand because sometimes people might want to step on you uh, simply because you're a woman, one. Mm. And secondly, they want to take advantage of your good heart and your kind heart mm. and uh, uh, try to mess you up. Yeah. So it's a challenge to try and create the boundaries, but it's also something mm. that I'm learning. Well, and you're a mother as well of yes, a nine-year-old boy, yes. um, uh, your son. Yes. Uh, we talked about the homemaker. We talked about the natural. And we talked about the qualities of a natural. Now, you're busy with the production and TV uh, anchoring. Hard word to say from where I come from. But uh, as you do all of that, how do you balance life and work? How do you find time to be with your son uh, and to be, you know, a homemaker? Pastor S, I can say that has been the greatest challenge I have faced so far mm. because I work against my son's time. Yeah. I report to work at 2 p.m. and I come back home at midnight. Mm. So clearly most of the time that my son is home, whether mm. it's on holiday or even school hours, when he comes back, I'm not there. Mm. So one thing that I had to do was I sacrificed that I have to drop my son to school every day in the morning, which mm. gives me an opportunity to just catch up. Mm. And when I'm off... I'm off, as in I don't even walk out of my gate so that my son can come home and find me mm. and I'll make a meal and we mm. can share and, you know, just play. Yeah. It's a sacrifice because at the end of the day, mommy needs to be there. Yeah. And I also need to understand my son and know him so that I can know where to help him as he yeah. grows up. Yeah. And uh, as far as work is concerned, it's also crazy because sometimes, you know, you go home, uh, there's something not working. Mothers, you'll feel me. Your house girl calls and she has left the baby in the house. Mm. I have a seven o'clock bulletin and I'm the producer and you're torn between who do I think about first at that particular point in time. Mm. But I thank God for good neighbors. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you call a girlfriend in the neighborhood and say, please take over. Yes. Uh, that's, that's friendship. Do you love homemaking? Do you, do you love cooking? I mean, you come from the coast, and I know that uh, that's one of the gifts you have from the coastal region. Uh, homemaking skills are normally, you know, I mean, you're groomed to eat, right? From yeah. when you're 10, 11, mm. you'll already be told to start making tea for the family and stuff like that. As you grow up and become a dot-com lady, mm. there are some things you begin to say in Nikona House Girl. Yeah. Lakini, for me, I think um, I enjoy being a homemaker. Really, I enjoy. I try as much as possible to do that when I'm home. I love to cook and try new recipes. Mm. So, Nenesa Sema Mimi ni homemaker. <laughs> I love it. Talking about friends, I'm sure you have many fans. I'm one of your fans, but you have many friends. Uh, you have maybe a few friends. Do you have some? And, uh, you know, uh, how has that been? Uh, yes, I have girlfriends. And uh, uh, for safety, <laughs> yeah. I have my core friends. There mm -hmm. are three ladies that I share with everything, like spiritual, mm. financial, anything, you name it. Mm. Uh, you know, when you go into the bathroom, you, release, you remove everything. Mm. That is my, those are my core friends. Yeah. And they're there for me through thick and thin. Okay. But because we don't get to meet as often, so to mm. go WhatsApp, Facebook, and all that, and phone mm. call, and I'm in the office most of the time. I have like two friends in the office that I run to if anything is wrong. Mm. Um, and then I have my prayer partners. There are just some ladies that I connect with in prayer, mm. and so I pray with them. So they are all my friends. Then I have my childhood friends who I grew up with. 
because I can't let them down. I can't say that I'm going to stay away from them because they have some memories that they carry with me. So for each one of them, uh, my greatest challenge has been to balance so that one doesn't feel more special than the other, mm. but it's clear to all groups that there's the domineering group. Does that happen <laughs> a lot with ladies, that some feel more special so they want to be treated differently? Yes, it does. Mm. I mean, we are, we are emotional. We like attention, <laughs> especially directed to us personally. Yeah. So it is a challenge, but I guess you just have to be wise. And also, it's good to set the, the, the record straight from the onset of the friendship. Well, uh, thanks again for being with us. But let, let, let's go back to our, our, our text that we want to look at today. Uh, besides the first Samuel 25, we want to look at the book of Ruth. If you would go there with me, Ruth chapter 1, verse, uh, I mean chapter 1, verse 1 to 18. We'd like to read that and just pull out a few qualities of great female friendships uh, or the friend in a woman and how that looks like. And I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, if you could read that for us. Uh, um, 1 to 18, uh, as we follow with you. Okay, Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Euphrates from Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Verse 3. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the men of Moab. The name of one was Opah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there for about ten years. And Malon and Chilon died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited the people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. Verse 8, And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. And the Lord grant you that ye may fast, find rest, each of you in the house of, your hus of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely will we return with thee unto thy people? And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go away. For I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, it should be, uh, if I say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for me while they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? No, my daughters. For it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law. But truth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou there after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat to me to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For where thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die? And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more so, if out but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Well, thank you very much uh, just for reading that. Wonderful story, isn't it? I know they're not equals. They're not the same age. One is yes. much older than the other. Uh, yes. But it's even a strange arrangement. Can you imagine, uh, um, you know, having this kind of friendship with your mother-in-law? Uh, you know, you've gotten together, uh, you liked their, her son, and stuff have happened, and he is dead, and now the three women remain. And I just see an extraordinary relationship. I mean, only God can make this happen uh, between any human beings. But I see it. Three things I see, uh, Dana, for me here. Number one, I think a real true friend is authentic, is real. 
You know, that's that what I see with uh, these people. Open, you know, nothing to hide, as you were saying, like being naked to each other and just sharing everything about uh, who you are. I mean, what you see is what you get. Uh, no backstabbing, no gossip behind you, not telling you you look beautiful. And then I go to another friend and say, ah, for that hairstyle, it's so 1960s. Uh, no, not doing that, just being real. This is who I am, this is what you get. Authentic, uh, being real. No masks, no sabotage, no cutting each other down. That's what we're talking about, real. I am your friend, I'm open, this is who I am. You could share about fears, about hopes, about expectations, about wishes. That's what I see with Naomi and Ruth. You know, Ruth comes to them and says, girls, we can't do this. You're not going to get a husband. You guys are young and hot and you need to get married. Uh, my son's died. So go find yourself some good men in town. Uh, let me go back. You know, very real conversation happening right there. That's what we see here. Authentic authenticity. Is that easy for women? And do you have some friends or yeah, the core friends you talked about? Are you real to each other? Yes, I can speak on behalf of my friends. We are real to each other. Yeah. Um, they will call me out if I do something wrong and I'll call them out. Like we said, rules of, you know, we had to set the rules down and said, if you're going to be accountable to one another, then this is what we need to do. Yeah. You will accept mm. when I come and tell you that you're wrong. Mm. You will accept when I come and tell you that you hurt me. And we'll have no attitudes and no secrets amongst each other. So mm. I think that for us was a great thing for us. Mm. But as you asked, is it easy for women to be authentic to one another? No, it is not. It's not. No, it is not. Why? Why is, why is that so? Why is it difficult? Why do they struggle with? Because, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to talk about men. But why do women struggle with realness? Let me do this so that the women don't look at me and stone me. <laughs> that is special point in time. But... Um, I don't know if I can say it's a, you know, like one of the ladies said, she didn't know how to explain it's a, a something yeah. that's just inside. Yeah. You know, that um, I don't know whether, I, you know, even Eve, we can blame her a bit. Yeah. Let's use the Eve story here. Yeah. You know, like I was telling you earlier on, you know, when Eve, when the serpent came and talked to Eve and told her, Eve, if you eat this fruit, eh, your eyes will be opened and you'll live for life. Uh-huh. <laughs> the truth would have been for her or the good thing would have been for her to say, eh, hey, what's an issue, Adam? Uh-huh. But she thought, I will see. Uh-huh. So she ate first the fruits so she can see first. And then <laughs> but then I'm not about Adam. it that way. That was pretty selfish, right? She ate so, first. So she ate first, so right now she can see. Yeah. And then now she can go and tell Adam, now eat so that you can see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we always look at it like that. We joke around it in our group. Yeah. Half the time, we say, let's blame Eve for yeah. all these problems. Yeah. But I think it's a struggle that women have to be authentic with one another. Mm-hmm. It comes with tricks of jealousy, um, mm. which I, I've never understood where it comes from. Mm. So it needs to be a choice that we have to make as yeah. women to be authentic. Yeah. yeah. Is there also a fear that what you say will be used against you? And does that ha- happen often? There is that, that the fear of what you say will be used against you, mm-hmm. which means then we have to choose wisely, which yeah. comes in the wi- wisdom, because you can't just go sharing your stories with everyone. Yeah. You need to create that base where you find that one friend that you talk to, mm-hmm. then just have your acquaintances who can hang out with and have fun with. Mm-hmm. So there's that fear one. Then there's, of course, there's a fear of being looked at like maybe you are shallow mm. or kama wewe ni mshaba. Unaona sasa kwa group yetu mimi ninakuaga mshaba na wanakubali hivyo. But you know it's the thing of each when you come with whatever it is you have your yeah. friend should be able to sharpen you and yeah. make you better which means you need to say eh, is it bolognese or it is bolognese or it is you know yeah. and and be easy that for them to tell you it's bolognese you know yeah. Yeah. so you don't go there and embarrass yourself simply because mm. of that but we find ourselves not being able to be true that we don't know whatever it is yeah. so we we'll just say just bring that spaghetti with the new yeah. Meat. yeah. <laughs> I love that. So yeah. you're saying this is not easy because women have lots of competition and yes. probably sizing each other up. Yes. Let me ask you just uh, one more question there. Have you ever, you said you're open, you're authentic, you're real. Has that ever been used against you by your friends? Pro, yes. For example, you know, I hear, I hear these stories. Uh, my wife tells me sometimes that uh, sometimes it's dangerous to tell your best friend as a woman uh, problems about your relationship with your bo- boyfriend because they might use that to take off with your boyfriend. 
I know that doesn't happen with women in Mavuno, but uh, uh, in a place, in another town, uh, that happens. Has uh, any of the information you've shared with your co-friends ever been used against you? Ata bim safari anasemanga, na ata shoshua alisema, you first have to protect your home. So whichever it is, whether it is your boyfriend or not, yeah. you need to know that the person you're talking to of course, it has your back. But it is true that you could share information and a lady would use it against you. But then, then again, you find out that that's not your friend. Yeah. I'll give you an example of one situation uh, where I learned something about my friend as a third party. So I told her, you know, you shared something with Caro. So I'll say, Mary, you shared something with Caro. And uh, this is what Caro has said about it. So mm. I think when you're sharing things with Caro, mm. don't be, you know, learn how to sieve. Because clearly she's not, she doesn't have your best interests at heart. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you paid for so, it. So, <laughs> how she went, Mary went and told Caro, eh, hey, can't they say it? No, 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 no. And uh, of course, the rest is history. So yeah. now that friendship died yeah. by virtue of that. Yeah. Another one where I was able to save our friendship was my friend introduced me to her boyfriend. And so we became friends. And then one particular point in time, the guy started texting me, you uh -huh. know, funny words. Eh, sweetie, did you spend the day okay? I heard you traveled, darling. Eh? I'm like, uh, am I the one who is not understanding these messages or what? So I called her up and I told her, hey, my friend, some messages your friend is sending me, your boyfriend is sending me, Mimi Sielevi. What should you do for a day? I love you, Nisho. Oh, that's a risk, right? <laughs> so I sent the messages to her, she read them, yeah. they broke her heart. Mm. She went and confronted her boyfriend. Uh, so she did ask him, you know, what kind of messages are these you're sending to Kanze? And of course, it wasn't me. He said that, you know, I didn't mean him. I know she's your friend. And so I'm watching out for the two of you. The two of you are my great buddies, yeah. you know, to get, get off. I'm with. trying to appreciate your exactly. friend. Exactly. I'm she's trying to appreciate friend, your so. friend. Yeah. yeah. So let me tell you what happened was that they eventually managed to sort out their issues. Yeah. But what that girl came back and told me was, Kanze, if ever in my life I needed to know that you are a friend who has my back, I know you have my back. Mm. Her husband, because he became husband, yeah. always tells her, you will never find a friend like Kanze. But why did I do it? I made a choice. Mm. I knew that if it was on my side, I would not want anyone to entertain something like that from my boyfriend. Mm. So I was not going to entertain it from my friend's boyfriend. Wow. Uh, that's a good quality. <clears throat> uh, but we're saying, uh, friends have to be real. Of course, you make choices of your friends. Uh, I believe uh, Ruth and Naomi chose, of course, the sons, and in the process they became friends. They were not like a thousand friends. There were a few, but they drilled deep, and they got to know each other. I love that. And something that has come up as you talked about this, I think the way f uh, women could be, uh, you know, could... Uh, help uh, themselves to even become better friends. And uh, I picked that as you talked even this morning. Is number one, establish some rules of friendship. You know, whether it's in the beginning or it's as you go. You know, some will say, hey, guys, uh, girls, we're going to be friends. But listen up. Not doing this, not doing the other. If this happens, this is how we sort it out. Um, if it gets gross, we call the cops. So just have some rules of engagement to clarify how these relationships are going to go down. Boundaries, expectations, limits of uh, openness, uh, agree on some guidelines. Uh, does that help? Yes, it does. It helps a lot. Like I told you, I've divided my friends, but they all know mm. that, you know, in this group, if they had a problem with me when they went to this group, I'll be sorted. Yeah. And so I think it's good to know that these ones know that I'm here because mm. I'm helping cancer with ABCD and yeah. I'm here because ABCD. But these ones, they'll take care of the... I love that. So yeah. establish some rules of engagement in the friendship. And number two, enhance your safety. You know, just, just tell each other and, and, and build it up over time that we're a safe group. We're not going to cut each other down. We're not going to look at each other with some eyes uh, that... Don't bless one another. We're going to create a trusting environment, a good environment with meddling rights and all of that. Tell each other the, the truth in love. Uh, you know, uh, embrace confidentiality. You know, create that, uh, uh, you know, safe 
environment. I believe by the time these guys talked the way they were talking about, I mean, Ruth and Naomi and Oprah, and they were saying, this is where we are, you're old, you can't even, I can't even give birth, or I can't help you guys, uh, you need to go. I mean, th that was real. It wasn't overnight. Yes, it, was it was over real. time. Yes. You know, it, it came up over time. But there was a, a safe environment right there. Well, wonderful. So a great friend is authentic. Number two. Are you tracking with me, ladies? Number two. I believe from this scripture we see that a great friend is dedicated. It's dedicated. Committed. Given to the relationship. Making time to hang out with your girlfriends and talk about uh, what matters. Adding value to each other. Meeting each other's needs. You know, if one of your girlfriends is really low and lonely, the rest uh, come over and you have a, an overnight and things like that. Things we, women do really well. Encouraging each other, you know, generally serving each other. I'm dedicated to my girlfriend, uh, to this woman in my life, and I want to be there for her. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Ruth, you know, she could have said like, like Oprah, it was real, God bless you, go to your country. But she said, the Bible says, clung to her just held on to the skirts of Naomi and say, you know what, wherever you go, I'm, I'm going to go. Wherever you're buried, I'm going to be buried. Your values are my values. Your God is my God. You know, I'm in this for the long haul. Uh, that's what she said. Dedicated, given to the relationship. That's what we see here. Now, it was beyond, you know, it wasn't about personal gains. I may not get a husband if I go with you, but guess what? I've got you. Uh, we are in this together and we are friends. So I'm going to accompany you. They must have had many conflicts. I mean, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, uh, many conflicts. There were, I'm sure, over time. But beyond conflicts, beyond what has happened, we are dedicated. Beyond burying our husbands, we are dedicated. I'm with you in this. Dedication. What did you say to that? Um, dedication, you know, all these things I keep saying they are a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I dedicate myself to my friends to be there for them through thick and thin. Yeah. If any one of them calls at 3 a.m., mm. I will get into my car and drive. If one of them can't sleep, and I mean, I need to be there and sleep with them through it, I will. Yeah. We have known that even when one is going through something financially, it doesn't mean that we can't meet. Mm. We will still meet at whatever places we want to meet, and we will pull together and that person will not leave felt out, will not leave left out. Yeah. Those are just rules that we need. Mm -hmm. Dedication is hard mm -hmm. because it takes you denying yourself to be there for someone else. Mm -hmm. And you can agree and you can attest with me that that takes a choice. Yeah. If I love you, Cynthia, then mm -hmm. I need to be there for you regardless of what happens. Mm -hmm. And which means I need to, deny, to deny myself whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe if it's finances, I might have 100,000 and you need 120. Mm -hmm. I can only raise 100. I'll give you mm -hmm. the 100. You mm -hmm. raise the 20. Yeah. It could be that tonight you have gone through a b bad breakup with your boyfriend and you can't mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. It means that I should also miss sleep with you. Let's cry. Let's eat ice cream and popcorn and watch movies. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow is another good day. Mm -hmm. It's I a choice. That. I love it. It's a, it, I love it. it does, it's a choice. That's what you're saying. But it's been said that women are very competitive. Because I think for me, dedication is very selfless. What Ruth said is not about me. It's really about us and this friendship. How do you as a woman overcome that in the office? You know, you, you want to make sure that the other girlfriend doesn't get uh, to the seat that you would love to get to. Uh, a lot of competition. How do you deal with that uh, to bring up, you know, dedication as, as girlfriends? Okay. Um, I think I'll, I'll big up my, my late mom. Yeah. Uh, my mom taught us always that when you pull down your sister, you pull down yourself. Mm. Because she says you might not make it to be the manager, mm. and she makes it to be the manager and she'll help you out. Yeah. So imagine if you pull her down and she doesn't make it to be the manager, mm. you have no one else to help you. Mm. So as I grew up, if there's one thing I purposed to do, is always help the next lady behind me. Mm. Everywhere I go, I'm always surrounded with girls. It's just a choice that I make. I also make very many male friends for a reason. Yeah. But yeah. I, I purpose to grow and to feed your, your girls around me. Mm. And when I know whatever it is that they're doing is wrong, I mean, I just tell them, Sasa ni kasirikia maunipende, yongo umeva baidhe yosirudio kuvatena. I rate you shuhuda. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I, say, I, I always look for a way to say it nicely. Yeah. Or I'll come out and say, hey, your hairstyle is mesongwa. But you know, your, your head, like mine, is like a chicken. Eh? So just don't try it again. Yeah. Yeah. You find a nice way of doing it. And if yeah. at all she's not performing at work, I'll tell her, you messed up. You should have taken this and not done this. Mm. And it's not easy either. Mm. Because in my workplace, I have tried to do that with my colleagues who are ladies. Mm. And one time I did that with one of my colleagues and I told her, you need to prepare for this eventuality because it will come. Mm. She was the one on duty and I was passing by. She felt like, what's Kanze trying to tell me? So eventuality happened and she got messed up and she got a memo and all that. So I was like, I was like, I was like, I was I was like, I was like, Dad. You were just being a dedicated friend. I was just being a dedicated friend and a yeah. colleague. Yeah. Because it's, it's teamwork. When people yeah. look at citizens, they don't know Kanzi as a person. Yeah. Or it's that I was directing. It's all of us. Yeah. But I'm committed to my team. I'm committed mm. to my colleague. So which means I have to be there for them and help them out. I love that. So dedication means looking out for your friends, yes. really, and being there for them. And being able to deal through the drama, walk through the drama. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> there's a drama queen in every woman. Oh, yes, Is yes. there one in you? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a drama queen in everyone. Yeah. It just depends on where you step. Yeah. The degree. Yeah. But what I have learned with time, because God has blessed me with plenty of vocabulary in my mouth, <laughs> that I can, you know, always unleash when called upon. <laughs> and it got me into a mess one particular day. Because there's no positive vocal vocabulary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it could it be positive or not. It's vocabulary. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, I learned with time because my first attack would mm. always be verbal. Yeah. My dramaness is in my mouth. Yeah. Then my actions will follow. Yeah. So then I'll bang, I'll throw chairs, you know, tantra and all that kind of things. Cut tires, or slash tires or things like that. And we get there, I mean, it's the truth. We get to that point. Please pass me salt. So you can see it. Yeah. But as I've grown older, yeah. I have become wiser. Yeah. So now I have learned that at the point where, you know, the vocabulary is coming up and it's coming up, the best thing for me to do is to sing. Mm. So um, I know we have a drama queen in each one of us. Mm. It's just a choice to make, to think about how you want to deal with it and the consequences. Because when you think about the consequence after that, you'll say things that have hurt someone that you can mm. never recover. Yeah. You'll throw a chair and hurt someone, that will be a scar. So every time they look at that scar, they'll always remember eh, mm. that day. Yeah. So I have made a choice and I also tell my friends, because I've known the drama queen in them, and I can see it. I tell her, eh, eh, eh. Mm. Tembea. Mm. And they walk. Take a walk. <laughs> yes. Uh, I like that. So recognizing you have your dramaness, um, for lack of a better word, and saying, how do I make sure I control that and manage that yes. for the goodness of a relationship? The relationship There's a yes. commitment I have to my friend. I don't want to throw it down the drain just because of uh, some drama. I love that. Dedication, I think what you're saying, calls for two things. Res resolve. Yes. It's way beyond feelings because a lot of times uh, you could be moved by feeling there's a woman and destroy a relationship. Yes. But it's because even when I don't feel you as my girlfriend, as my friend, I am dedicated to, to this. Yes. It's going to be more than that. Yes. It's a decision that I have made. But number two, it's a faith in God. Yes. I think I see, as Ruth says, I'm dedicated to you, I'm coming with you, and we're going back to your country, I may not get a husband, but I trust God. I trust God will meet my needs. I trust God will sort me out, and God sorted her out, and she eventually got a husband. So dedication, resolve, and faith. Let me go to the last one, uh, Kanse. Uh, a great friend is authentic, is dedicated, but sadly is loving. Loving. Easily to relate, good-hearted, you know, uh, fun to hang out with, affectionate, uh, committed to your welfare, goodwill, you know, all of that. I see these ladies and the way they hugged each other and they definitely cried, the Bible says. I mean, they, were, they liked each other. It was hard to part. And, you know, they were uh, friends with each other. They were friendly. That's what we are talking about. Uh, the conversation just shows they were loving towards each other. Would you consider yourself loving or friendly to your friends? Mm. <laughs> Who would say no? 
<laughs> I mean, so they've told me also, yeah. oh, you are so lovely. So see, I'm loving. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what does that look like? Yeah. Break it down. I mean, I think for us, you know, when you, you know, you talk about loving, it means, you know, you are lovable. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you have to do something. Someone just can't love you like that. Mm. I mean, one thing that I do with my friends and what we do for each other is that once in a while, even if I pass by somewhere, like I can pass by Mavuno and see Mavuno do this and I'm like, hi, so and so is at work and uh, she hasn't had breakfast, I can buy for her. Uh, hey, you, you look down, what's up? But you know, think about what she likes to do, take her mm. out and have fun. Mm. Um, so just being there, I guess, touching that special spot in my friends. Yeah. Yes. Are there some of your friends who are or were or are uh, around your workplace or the co friends who are really difficult to work with? Yeah. Because I mean, I've met some ladies like that that I've worked with. Uh, we've done something together. And, and when they just begin to talk and the, their attitude and the way they look at you and answer a question, you just feel put off. Do you have people like that? Yes, we encounter them in the office. Unajo yeah. Adelasi, Nini Nini, is hard. Mm. Uh, for women, mm. uh, for us ladies actually. But one thing that I realize in the office that someone gives you attitude because they think you're competition. Yeah. The moment we stop thinking about the other lady as competition, then it will just come down. Yeah. And if at all she's co competition is healthy, Abby. Mm. So when you start looking at her at competition that you think by sneering at her and shouting back at her will make you feel be any better, mm. then you're lying to yourself. Yeah. So as you shout out at that person because you think you're going to make the, you're, you're not helping yourself. It doesn't work. Yeah. Bad yeah. attitude. Yeah, there are people who it's hard to love. Mm. Yeah. You know, uh, I think for me, there's nothing as attractive as a woman who is friendly. Uh, who talks to you well, who doesn't suspect you at the first instance, talks to you well, and just have a, has a good heart. I mean, it's so attractive to any man. I know some men could take advantage of it. I know some things could happen, but it's really just a good spirit. Uh, but let me ask you uh, to bring this conversation to a close. Um, you have your friends in the media, you have your co-friends, you have other people that you're related with, uh, even men that you're friendly to, uh, uh, within the right uh, boundaries. But let me ask you, what would you love to be remembered for as a friend? If your friends were to think about you, what legacy does this lady, uh, has this lady left in our lives? What would that be? So when I think about that question, Pastor S, Ninaona, Casket, Maua, Yeah, don't worry. Eight, uh, you know, want, 80, 90 years Yeah, yeah to come. not anytime soon, of course. Yeah. I have time to still be a good friend. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that I would want my friends to think that, um, to remember that I was reliable, mm -hmm. that when they needed me, I was there. Yeah. Secondly, I would want them to know that I was, I would want them to say that I was trustworthy, mm -hmm. that whatever it is they entrusted to me, Mm. I was able to hold it mm. and keep it for them. That I was loving. That I, I went out of my way to be there for them and I, mm. to make them laugh. Mm. And I was the, you know, I was the party. I was yeah. the happening. Yeah. Um, I'd want them to... I'm just going to you to translate. Give me a few minutes. Say it in Swahili. We are Kenyans. <laughs> Like I, was a, I was a pillar to them in one way or the other yeah. in the sense that they would run to me whatever happened and mm -hmm. they knew that I'd always be there for them. Yeah. And above yeah. all, that in me, they understood the love of Christ. Yeah. That is what I would want them to know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. You know, that kind of friendship points to God. It just brings trust. And I know I can trust God. You know, uh, I have a friend that I can trust. And it just teaches me to relate with God. I love it. But in short, what did you tell your, your friends here, especially the women, about friendships and how far I could take you? I look at these women, and, you know, a book is written about them. We get to learn about God from that story. I mean, there's a beauty of female friendships. When they go down well, they point to the almighty God. They, they, they speak to us. Uh, parting shot. How, what would you tell your, uh, uh, your friends? Especially the women. Naomba kusimama. Please. I'll just say one thing. Ladies, we are all beautifully and wonderfully made. You might look at your neighbor and think she's not beautiful enough because you have be a better figure or beautiful legs and everything. You might feel that you're more learned than the person next to you. You have your master's, you have your PhD, and she has her diploma. 
But I want to tell you one thing. Your diploma won't hug you. Mm. Your diploma will not cry with you when you're down. Mm. Your beautiful looks will not stand with you when you have nothing. It is your sister. It is your friend. So as you take time pulling down the other person, whether you're a manager looking down on your peer, <clears throat> remember tomorrow when you're crying, she could be the shoulder you'd be leaning on. So if you treat her badly, who will you cry on to? So think about that. Every time you sit down and talk about your sister, you're hurting her, you're hurting yourself in the long run. Barikiweni. Wow. Thank you. One more time, let's give it up for... Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. We, we, we appreciate... Give it up one more time as she goes down. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate that. Well, as I bring this to a close, I think as I look at the things we have talked about, I want to ask every woman who is here today, are you lovely? Are you attractive? Are you the kind of a friend who points people to the character of your mighty God? Are you that kind of a person? As a boss, as a mother, as you relate to other people at work, to your teammates, do you bring this to, to you? And two things I would say about being friendly, if, uh, you know, you, you struggle with some things because of the pain you have carried from the past, because of, uh, uh, you know, some uh, emotional hurt that you have had, deal with the past. Don't allow the past and the pain you have carried rob you of the beauty to be loving and friendly to others and change your attitude. It's easy for you to say, okay, my attitude, I don't even like girlfriends. In fact, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to hang out with men. They're just easier to hang out with. I've heard ladies say that. You know, this drama of girls, I don't want it. Let, let me just move on. This is what I've come to realize. Change your attitude. There's good in every person. There's something good in every person. Even the worst of us. And as you begin to relate with your friends, you're going to find out and figure out things that you didn't even know. God is going to use that even to change you. A great friend.